Hello, this is the Shoddy Strawman. Today I'm going to be going over Little Cupping, a brief guide to the mechanics of Little Cup. How is this different from OU and the other higher tiers? This tier doesn't make sense. Well, I'm hoping to at least shed some light on the subject. First and foremost, you can only use Pokemon that are level 5 instead of level 100. And they must be able to evolve, but they cannot be evolved into. So for quick examples, you can use Azuril because it'll evolve into Meryl, but you cannot use Meryl because it evolves from Azuril despite the fact that their stats are really similar. And you also cannot use a single stage Pokemon like Stone Journer. A uh, rule of thumb is if you can use Eviolite on it, then it's probably good, but also make sure it doesn't have any pre evolutions. So, alright, we're level 5, and we're obtainable level 5, but how does that change anything? How does that make anything different? Well, first and foremost, EVing is significantly different as a result. If I want to give my Dragapult 200 in a special attack to make it stronger, it'll get exactly 200 EVs, and then it'll get 50 points. However, if I go over to my Varum, and I want to give it more speed, it's going to have 60 EVs, and it only gives it one point of speed. If I want to give it some defense, it's 12 defense EVs, and that'll give it only an extra point. What's going on there? Well, when it comes to earlier mons, they like to do a like level 5 and below, like that kind of earlier, not like generation earlier. But when Pokemon are lower level, they like to round down significantly more. And that applies to base stats as well. So an example of this is that if I have a Ponyard, it'll have 60 base speed, and then its speed stat will be 15. But then if I have a Psyduck, its speed is 55. Its base speed stat is going to be 15 as well? What's going on there? That's due to stat compression. A lot of stats are going to be really close together. So despite the fact that 60 and 55 are different values, because they're both level 5, they'll just become the same value afterwards. And you think, oh, well, it doesn't really matter then. It does, and that comes back to EVs. And that's that, despite the fact that these are different speed stats, and they will get both functionally the same amount of speed, they will require more EV investment to get to that max speed. With Ponyard, the speed is 60. However, because of how the EVs work, I only need 196 in order to get up to 15. Whereas with Psyduck, I need 236. It should also be noted that for the first stat bump, it requires this weird amount, like 76 or something like that, or uh, 36. It depends on the trailing number. So in 45, it'll depend upon the 5. In 70, it'll depend upon the 0. And that'll change how much you have to do for your initial investment. Everything after that, that's always going to be 80. So because of that stack compression, a lot of our speed tiers are very close together. And the EV system is kind of weird, but don't worry. Showdown will just snap to it so like oh well this is 20 it's 52 you don't have to worry about having these really complex things that i have to memorize it'll just snap to it for you afterwards well what else makes the tier really unique first and foremost items so every single pokemon in little cup can use an eviolite if i want to put an eviolite on the side up it'll work and what it does is that it gives a plus one defense bonus and plus one special defense bonus so that means that you get a 50 percent increase and that's viable on every single Mon. Every single Mon can run Eviolite, but not all of them will. And that makes the metagame significantly bulkier as a result, because you can just get a whole, you get a free stored power, meaning that you're harder to kill as a result. Next we have Life Orb. Life Orb is still a really good item, even in the upper tiers, but it's, it's worthwhile mentioning it here because of how its mechanics work. Its description is that Holder's attacks do 1.3 times damage and it loses one-tenth of its max HP after each attack. Now the reason why that's important is that if I put that on a Basculin and it's got 281 as its, as its HP stat, then if it uses a move with Life Orb, then I'll take 28 HP and recoil. That's 10%. However, because of how low our stats are, that means that, and there's also going to be a lot of running down, because of how low the stats are, life orbs one tenth, it will always round down. If you get up down to 19 HP with certain HP stats, that means that life orb will only ever do one point of damage as opposed to two, so it does roughly 5% in recoil as opposed to 10. And as a result, instead of getting 10 charges, you get 19 instead. 
it's really, really strong as a result. Obviously not everything likes running this. Sometimes they like the, the added bulk of Eviolite instead, but it, it's a really popular item as a result of this really interesting interaction. Next we have Berry Juice. So Berry Juice is a specific item that restores 20 HP to a user when its HP is at one half or less. And it was really good in Little Cup, as mentioned before, because you have such low HP stats anyway, that if you take any one or two hits, get down to like five HP, you'll get back up to full. But the problem is that it's currently not in the game. Oop. It's just not coded in. So instead, what we have to do is that we have to use Orin Berries instead. And those are half as effective, but it's still significantly better than something like Leftovers. And the reason for that is that, once again, because our HP stats are so low, and because Leftovers only heals 1 16th of your max HP, you will only get one HP per turn, and you'll have to take 10 turns in order to get the benefits that Orinberry would get you in one turn. It's not very useful as a result. Finally, we have Choice Scarf. This will give you a 1.5 times boost to your speed. And the reason why that's important is that despite the fact that Varum can only ever get up to 15 speed with a boosting nature, it should never be able to outspeed Diglett naturally. However, despite the fact that this speed stat is half of Diglett's essentially, by putting a Choice Scarf on it, it will still outspeed the Diglett because of how low the stat compression is. And a lot of people are asking, well, a lot of people have the question, well, if Choice Scarf works, and if I can use Life Orb and all that sort of stuff, why don't I want to use Choice Items? Why can't I use Choice Band and Choice Specs to really be a good breaker and break through things? Well, that comes down to damage rolls. And because of how damage rolls work in Little Cup, there's a lot more rounding down. So in a higher tier, you can have your Specs Dragapult use a Shadow Ball versus a Heatran, and then there's a possibility it might KO, but you're not sure. And the reason for that is because you have a whole bunch of variants within your damage rolls. So you can get from 154 up to 183, and that's a pretty significant difference. That's 29 HP that can be lost or kept depending on how well you roll. However, in Little Cup, you can use a Thunderbolt on a Pawniard from a Giraffe Rig, and it'll do anywhere from 7 to 9. And because there's a lot of rounding down in the code because of how low level you are, most of the time the life orb boost and or the choice choice band or choice specs boost, they'd be roughly the same anyway. And because of these low rolls, they're going to be significantly easier to understand. Because if you're trying to get into mods and you're just like, oh, well, I don't understand why my Shadow Ball didn't two hit KO that Heatran, the Kyle says it should. Well, it's because of like leftovers and then also you roll poorly and all this other stuff. It's like, oh, well, you just go to the little cup. It's like, oh, well, why didn't this kill? Oh, because it's got Eviolite, so it's pretty bulky. And as a result, you can kill it. And then it's a lot easier to understand. I think this is probably the most beginner friendly of any of the tiers because of how low the power level is. There's a lot more things that are viable that are like the fun mons. It's like, oh, well, I can use like Sprigatito if I go go Quaxley. I can use my favorite starter in this tier and it'll actually be good. Whereas in the higher tiers, it's like, ah, oh, well, yeah, good luck with using a uh, Quaxley's final evolution. It's not viable. But you can use a whole bunch of the pre-evolutions here and it's really fun as a result. I'm hoping that at a minimum, this got you more interested in Little Cup and more educated on what's actually going on here. And if you want to keep up to date, it's like, oh, what's going on in the current meta? What, what are some really important principles to know while I'm in Little Cup? I'm going to keep on making videos about that. Uh, I'm going to be a Little Cup focused channel. And I'm hoping that you'll stick around for the ride. And if you don't, you know what? Thank you for your time anyway. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping that if you have any more questions about Little Cup, you can always go to the Little Cup Discord. There's chat rooms on, on Showdown. And you can just ask around. Never be afraid to ask questions. You may be an idiot in that moment of being like, oh, why does why does Quaxley run Brave Bird? It's like, okay, sure, but then afterwards you actually know, you know? So, you know what? Just be patient with yourself, and you're going to go far. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.